The National Hockey League's general managers meetings are this week, and why should you care? That's a great question. Frankly, I'm glad you asked it. Because the NHL's GM meetings are usually just an excuse for a bunch of rich dudes to gather in Florida and wear shorts. But sometimes they get stuff done, and sometimes that stuff is good. Check out this report from CJ, Chris Johnston, who is at the meetings in person. Interesting nugget coming out of today's NHL GM meeting. A couple managers mentioned that the league has signed on to do a behind-the-scenes series with Amazon that will center around 10 to 12 star players. It's due for a fall release. First and foremost, good! The NHL does not have nearly enough of this stuff. They did have NHL 24-7, and the Leafs had the Amazon documentary, for example, but they've always just been deemed as, you know, kind of a distraction. It would probably help if one of the teams who got one of these documentaries won and didn't blow a 3-1 series lead! Well, listen, I think this is a really good thing and a really interesting thing, and it got me thinking, which players do I want to see covered? Chris Johnston reported 10 to 12 star players, so here's my wish list of players that I want to see covered in this documentary, and they're not all necessarily stars. I want to start with two guys, a pair of brothers, and I actually think pairs is a really good way of setting this documentary up. Specifically, I want to see Matthew and Brady Kachuk covered. There's already a lot of saturation with these guys, but I think that's for good reason. They're really interesting people. They're interesting on the ice and off. They obviously have a special bond. It could start by talking about the bond that they shared during the Stanley Cup final last year when Matthew had a broken sternum and Brady was helping him get his jersey over his head. But it moves forward to this season because they're leaders of their respective teams in the same division and they're going head to head. For one brother, Matthew, things are going great. For the other brother, Brady, things are going unfathomably bad. As a fan, I want to see that juxtaposition and I also want to see how often do these guys communicate, in person especially, during the season? Like when they meet up on a game day, what is that like? Next, I want to move to a team like the Boston Bruins. And to me, there's three potential guys. Brad Marchand is the really easy one because he's the brand new captain. He's been with this team for well over a decade, but this is his first season as captain. Again, taking over beginning at the end of last season when the Bruins got eliminated and that famous hug with Patrice Bergeron and the heartbreak and then taking a team that had the regular season record in wins and then starting the season even hotter than you did the year before. Plus he's just a really interesting personality and even though he drives you nuts, he sure is entertaining. But again, Brad Marchand kind of done a lot. So here's a bit of a newer idea. Jeremy Swayman. Specifically, I think this is an opportunity for another really interesting pair, Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark. Because Swayman went from Vesna Trophy winner last year to essentially losing his job to Swayman. But they're best buds and they do the hug thing! Also, Swayman's just a great personality. I actually had the fortune of talking to him in Nevada at the NHL player tour, the media tour that they did a couple years ago. And I think it's important to remember, goalies are weird! We saw that with Ilya Brzgalov! And he basically did that by himself. When you talk about two goalies together, who are teammates but also sort of competing with each other? Oh yeah, give me all of that. Now this is one that I want with an individual, but I don't think we would ever get it, but screw it, it's a wish list. I know he's not a player, John Tortorella. Who doesn't want to see that? I want to see his beef with the Philly reporters over the Kevin Hayes stuff. I want a behind the scenes of the night he got kicked out of that West Macaulay game. I know the NHL probably has a say of what ends up on the cutting room floor and what actually makes it public, and we'll probably never see that, but I can dream. Also also, John Tortorella just may not want to do this by himself. So, if I can't have just him, just him by himself, give me a little bit of Travis Konechny as well. It's hilarious watching Torts scream things at any and everyone from the bench and Konechny just backs him right up. I need a full behind the scenes episode of the man who once got Jake Gensel to say shut up during an outdoor game. And the last duo I want just because I think it'd be interesting to this fan base. Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. Steve, don't you mean Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner? No, I don't. I mean Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. Even Austin Matthews and William Nylander might have been a better duo to name, but we see those guys all the time. I'm sure the NHL is going to feature them anyway, so why am I adding them to my wish list if they're going to give it to me anyway? Give me the human embodiment, the real life manifestation of Corey and Trevor from Trailer Park Boys. Give me Tyler Bertuzzi 
and Max Domi. Tyler Bertuzzi is honest to goodness one of the most fascinating people in the sport in that I, I don't know what he thinks on a day-to-day -day basis. And I want to hear Max Domi's vocal routine and his private thoughts about how he keeps getting hit in the face with sticks and losing teeth and it never gets called. Now, this next one isn't a star player at all, but He's one of the most talked about players in the National Hockey League this season, definitely since the calendar flipped over to 2024. Matt Rempe of the New York Rangers. You're telling me you're not watching that? This six foot seven, six foot eight kid, he's like 230, walks into the league and just starts fighting everybody in sight? He gets two match penalties and a four game suspension at the 10 game mark? A dude who, in a league of a dwindling amount of heavyweights, has basically fought all of them already at 21 years old. He's fighting guys with two black eyes. Like, who is not interested to hear the story of Matt Rempe and this incredible 10 game blip? It's a, it's a blip. It's a blink of an eye in hockey history, but I want to see the behind the scenes of that. Was anyone ever trying to talk him out of fights? That's the kind of stuff I want to see. I, I think he's one of the most fascinating guys in the NHL right now. Now this next guy doesn't get nearly the attention that Matt Rempe does and the New York Rangers, but stick with me on this one. Connor Ingram. I mean, he's a pretty good goalie. He's had a rough run of it lately with the Arizona Coyotes on account of the Arizona Coyotes don't really win games anymore. But at the beginning of the season, they were winning lots of games. Connor Ingram has an interesting social media personality and also, don't you want a behind the scenes look of what it's like to play in a college arena? I'm sure the final product will be sugar coated and everything, but if this is my own personal wish list, I want a real look, a real glimpse into what it's like playing in the biggest hockey league in the world and playing in an arena that's less than 5,000 people a night. Does he have friends who come to town on the visiting team? I want to hear what that's like. Hello and welcome to our humble abode. As they walk out of the visitor's dressing room through what is essentially a Home Depot and then onto the ice. There's going to be a lot of older players on this list because they've been around longer. They have a story to tell, a longer story to tell, but sometimes you got to focus on the new kid. Connor Bedard has already been through hell Hell and back this season. Number one, he has to play for the Chicago Blackhawks. That is torture in and of itself. Early in the season, the Blackhawks were trying to protect the kid and then the kid slowly came out of his shell on his own just sniping on everybody from town to town. I want to know how he deals with the fans, how he deals with the media, and the aftermath of dealing with that broken jaw and subsequently coming back from it and being just as good as he ever was. For my next player, who had the most inflammatory, controversial quote during training camp? And before you say Mike Babcock, I don't, I don't know if he was ever quoted. I think he just said, give me your phone. That's a paraphrase, not a quote. Dude, Steven Stamkos, the captain of the Tampa Bay Lightning, who won two cups, went to three straight Stanley Cup finals before falling to the Leafs in the first round last year. He comes to camp as an expire. He's on an expiring contract and he talks about how mad he is, how upset he is. On his first day of work of the year, he talks about how he's upset about where the contract talks are. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's March and he still doesn't have a deal. Not everything has to be compared to the last dance of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls clinging to their last vestiges of greatness. In a way, the stakes are almost higher for Stamkos or at very least there are bigger question marks. Like the Last of Us documentary, Michael Jordan and the Bulls finish off their second three-peat. But with Stamkos, you win the cup, you win the second cup during COVID, you go to the Stanley Cup final, you're finally dethroned, and then you're knocked off in the first round. And this year, you're starting the season for a, a month or two without Andre Vasilevsky, and you don't have a contract, and this might be your last season here. That, and we don't already know the outcome. We will by the fall, but what if this is it? This is curtains for the Steven Stamkos Tampa Bay Lightning. Or what if they take that crown right back? I'll go through these last few a little quicker. Kale McCarr, it feels like everything with the Colorado Avalanche surrounds Nathan McKinnon, and I want to know what makes that guy tick. I really do. But Kale McCarr feels like he should be a bigger star in this league. Like, he's obviously the best defenseman. He is the best defenseman. Year in, year out, there might be defenders who 
perform better in that given season, but year in, year out, there is no better defender than Kale McCarr. But it kind of feels like he's overshadowed because Nate is so ridiculous. I want to know more about Kale. There's the old guy, there's the young guy, there's the dude on his last season, there's the dude on his first season. I want to know about the guy who chose to stay. Connor Hellebuck with the Winnipeg Jets. That team looked like they were fried at the end of last year's playoffs. Then, during the offseason, both Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck signed extensions with that team. And a lot of us went, uh, okay. And now look at them. They're a certified cup contender. Who doesn't want to hear that story from Hellebuck himself? One of the best, if not the best goalies in the NHL right now. Then there's Marc-Andre Fleury. I mean, this is it, right? I don't know if he has had an interesting enough season or the Minnesota Wild have had an interesting enough season to warrant it, but he's had an interesting enough career that it demands it. It's also not obvious that Fleury's done, so I like the mystery there. We'll obviously know by the time the documentary comes out, but like... Fleury was sort of the backup to start the season, then a tandem goalie, and now he's just straight up stole the Minnesota Wild starting job, and they're trying to push for the playoffs here. Second last, I'm gonna go with the Vegas Golden Knights because they're the reigning defending Stanley Cup champions, and also they play in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm gonna go with Jack Eichel, because he's kind of prickly, he's kind of got a sense of humor, and I wanna know what it was like going from Buffalo, all those years in Buffalo, to finally your first run in the Stanley Cup playoffs ends with the Stanley Cup. Lastly, give me any Hughes brother. I'm not gonna be picky about who. Jack would be very interesting. Uh, Luke would be very interesting. Quinn, probably the most interesting. He just got named captain and the Canucks are in the middle of a huge turnaround this season. Though not entirely a drama-free turnaround, they've hit a bit of a speed wobble and could still end up winning the Stanley Cup. There have been big signings with the Canucks, big trades, additions, subtractions. I want to know about that guy and just a really dry sense of humor, low-key, really funny kid. So, what do you think of my list and did I miss anybody? Let me know in the comment box down below, but for now that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, it's coming out in the fall, can't wait to see it.